Okay, so we are currently in a program called ColorThink, and it's called ColorThink Pro 3.0 for those of you interested. And basically, it's not a free program, but it allows you to plot different profiles, different images, and all that kind of thing into this program. It shows you 2D and 3D representation of that, so you can compare them and see what's really visually going on with your color. It's very useful for analyzation purposes and you know demonstration purposes, like, like we're going to be doing here. So let's start, shall we? Well, I have an option here to to open up this, and if you ever Googled or tried to search anything on color management, you've probably seen this shape, like a horseshoe shape. And this is basically an attempt to plot uh, the human vision in this 2D manner. Now, it slightly favors the greens a bit more than it should, but ultimately it is a representation of human vision. So we are going to use now an option here to plot different profiles we sh we saw in the earlier video about slides, you know, when we saw them in textual way, we're going to see them here visually. So the first one if you remember was sRGB. And sRGB the standard one used for web if you remember smallest, ga smallest gamut and so on and so forth. Well, here we're mainly interested in how do gamuts relate to one another, or should I say the reproducible color range. So let's compare it to the other one. We said color match, you remember. Now color match is slightly bigger. Let me go back. So this is color match, right? Well, color match was a more of a legacy version used to prepare images for pre-press environment. And as you can see, it's slightly larger. Supposedly, it doesn't. Uh, it's it's not as big. Uh, it's not as favorable in the skin tones and this area here. But this could be deceiving because here's the thing: we are seeing this now in 2D. But I have an option here to switch to 3D. So let me show you when that happens. what we're seeing is that all of a sudden it doesn't look like a pyramid anymore it looks kinda like a weird shape right let me zoom that out a bit and let me deactivate the spectrum locus and as you can see they look well quite similar but there are different now we can't really see what's going on so I'm gonna change some settings here I'm gonna click on the sRGB and I'm gonna turn it into single color and now you'll be able to see something very interesting. Let me go back in 2D. And here, supposedly, sRGB is bigger in every way than the color match in all those magentas and reds, right? But if you switch to 3D, you'll see that's true all the way up to the lighter colors. Now, in lighter colors, you can see that actually color match is a little bit more bigger than that. Same is true for some other colors. So 2D is really not the best way to get a sense of what's really going on, but it's a good way to quickly kind of see what's going on in between two different, you know, just a rough idea of what's going on between two different color profiles. So we'll use this flat through color. I'll deactivate the color match. And now we have only sRGB. And I'll go back into 2D because we have to compare it with other spaces. Okay, now we've seen how color match works. Now let's say, uh, let's move on to the two more commonly used ones. And the other one was uh, Adobe RGB, if you remember. That's the one that Adobe essentially created for pre-press work and, you know, to accomplish, to, to take up more of the color, to, to produce more color, uh, to reproduce more color. So let's take a look. And here it is. It's quite bigger, right? Adobe RGB. And uh, what's interesting is that it's not just bigger, it's also bigger in some of the greens ones here. But that's not completely accurate because if I were to show you this from a different angle, like so, and this is now in so called lab mode, right? Which is more accurate representation, but most people don't use it, so I don't want to confuse you too much. And you can see that, yes, we have more greens here in Adobe RGB, but not as not as drastic as we saw here, maybe, compared to the other elements, right? So 
we're gonna use this because everybody is using it but lab mode will probably give you a little bit better representation of what's going on with different color uh, profiles still this is a very good comparison now if we compare one to the other what we see is that sRGB is a lot smaller than Adobe RGB in fact if we will look at this in 3D let me switch to wireframe for the um, for the Adobe RGB and you can see that basically uh, sRGB fits comfortably within Adobe RGB entirely actually right in every area there is no one area that we see that goes outside of it so we can clearly say that sRGB is the smallest one and the sRGB is the smallest one and the Adobe RGB is the well the medium size why it's a medium size well let's compare it to Profoto this is Profoto even bigger color space now we do see that Adobe RGB goes outside here a little bit but that's not that much as I showed you in a lab mode it doesn't look as bad but essentially what we have is Profoto which is so big that let me deactivate this one uh, that Profoto is so big that even goes slightly outside in some of the colors outside of the human vision now they're still there mathematically but we might call them since we can't see them with our eyes we might say uh, it's theoretical color but the point I'm trying to make is that this this pro photo is really really a big color space in fact it's so big that we tend to use it for our raw conversion you know all raw conversion use I, I believe some form of pro photo and especially um, especially the uh, Adobe products and what this allows us to do is no matter what the camera was able to capture it will fit into this no matter what kind of a monitor you're using it will fit in this color space no matter what you're printing it to it will fit into this color space so ultimately it is a good storage a good warehouse space which also can be used as a working space when and how we'll talk about that more later when it will make more sense but just so you know that's the bigger one now let's compare Adobe RGB, we have one here, and the uh, the not so standard, the one I talked about, more more used in Europe for prepress, ECI RGB. And as you can see, it's well, it's a little bit bigger. Now, let's go to Adobe RGB. Yeah, sorry, maybe we should turn this into 3D first, so we can see clearly what's going on. And I will turn the um, ECI into a wireframe. And I will also make it single color so it's easier to see what's going on. And we can see that the only places where Adobe RGB is a bit bigger, and remember Adobe RGB is now represented in color, and this red wireframe is ECI. And we can see that where is Adobe RGB a little bit better is in the greens but very slightly nothing significant and pretty much well the other place is blues a little bit right here and some of these well magentas I guess and a little bit on the top and that's about it but the skin tones are primarily bigger inside of ECI and much of these darker greens and blues as well all the way to these really darker saturated blues so if you have a sky you get a slightly better you know more colors uh, more reproducible colors in ECI if you're doing landscape or something you have a green you're probably gonna get away better inside of uh, inside of uh, ECI right not in this area that much but it's a very slight difference nothing significant and if you're doing skin tones or reds some kind of a dress in a fashion or something you know you might get away with it better actually quite a bit better here inside of ECI so let's go back through color 
flat 2D and let's deactivate our one and let's compare Adobe RGB with Profoto once again and let's put them in 3D and now you'll see something very interesting now let's put Profoto into wireframe and single color now what you're seeing is really interesting right that even the green ones that supposedly go outside oops I need to okay now if you remember this should be the the green ones that go outside right but take a look at in 3d we can clearly see that there's plenty of room there so the 2d representation is not as good as you would expect because it's just one angle this is like in 3d so we can see that no matter what you look at it from what angle you can clearly see that in fact Profoto is the biggest one and that it contains all the other spaces within itself grid warehouse now let's deactivate Adobe RGB and let's turn this into a flat true color and now I can also reduce the opacity of Profoto and what you'll see is that it goes beyond what we see in 2D this whole greenish area here right we can clearly see that even even in blues it goes outside what we could see in 2D and even in uh, this area here so it's a very very large space humongous actually and no matter what you do you can put stuff inside then it will maintain all the color okay now let's go back to 2D one more time so definitely the pro photo is the safest color space in terms of not losing any color that you might have but if you're sending it off to a client or output device that's a lot smaller in terms of reproducible colors whether that be an sRGB environment such as monitor maybe or something like that or uh, a prepress for color printing process we will see that we have to compromise some of the color that's available but of course there's also another factor that we didn't mention right away and we'll use that later just gonna build up to that point and that is that we have not seen how the color of the actual image fit into these color spaces which is exceptionally important because a black and white image doesn't have a lot of color right so you can put it in even the smallest color space and it won't make any difference we'll see how that works later while this huge color space really works well if you can reproduce all of your color and if you have an image that's really saturated really bright and you really want to maintain that color we'll see how all of that works later for right now I just wanted to show you how these profiles relate to each other when you plot them all into this one place right uh, let me deactivate this so they basically go from the smallest one to a little bit bigger to a little bit bigger to a little bit bigger into the biggest humongous one and uh, what also you can see is that some of them don't look straight at least in 2D right some are very much like a triangle and some are not and this is especially true for uh, CMYK profiles as I will see something a bit later how they are not triangles at all they have very uneven shapes while something that we can reproduce on the screen they have a very even shape very characteristic for um, RGB profiles